You're very welcome back. Now, the numbers of children being homeschooled have almost doubled in recent years to over 1,300. So what is homeschooling all about and why are so many people opting for it? With us are Pauline O'Reilly of the Homeschool Education Network Ireland and Cora McCauley, who's schooling three of her four children at home. You're both very welcome to the programme. Good morning. So I suppose the fact that there's... 1,300 or so children of the entire um, uh, young population being homeschooled does mean that it's, it's, a, it's an alternative choice. It's kind of a, a left-field decision to make. What was it that drove you to decide to, to, to homeschool your children? Well, for me, we, we never sent our children to school. Mm. So I suppose it, it's a different situation mm. for Cora. Um, when our son was about four, we were thinking, I, you know, his name was down in several schools, mm -hmm. as is the usual. Um, and... He ju it just didn't seem like it was going to be a good fit for him, personally, to be in a class with 30 people. Yeah. Um, we felt he wasn't ready. And so we made the decision, I mean, a lot of sleepless nights, but mm. we did make the decision to do it for two years and then send him to school when he's seven. Yeah. You know, he'd be much more able for it. But within six months, it was going so well that we just stuck with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cora, that's mm. what, what I, I have been hearing from the, the parents of children who are homeschooled, that there's a lot of trepidation there at the start. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a, a lot of soul searching goes on before this decision is made. And even when you start, there is still a period where you're asking yourself, have we done the right thing? Now, one of your children has attended school and the other three are, are homeschooled. Did you have any of that sort of trepidation when you were uh, deciding to keep your other three at home? Definitely. Yeah. It, um, it came from them, not from us. It was completely outside my scope, you know, to think of them homeschooling. But they actually sat us down and they said that they would like to homeschool just mm. to try it as a, an experiment. And um, the reason was that they wanted to pursue their interests and hobbies and um, see how that went, that they just gave some time to themselves. So. Um, we decided um, to do it for one year mm -hmm. as an experiment, see how it went. And it went so well, we haven't looked back. We did a second year, you know, it went even better. Yeah. They're getting more energized, more confident. They're learning so much. They never switch off, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't end at three o'clock in the day. They, um, everything is a learning experience every day. You know, they, they just look at the world in a different way. Yeah. Can I ask, what is the environment, what does it consist of in terms of the, the, the typical school day, children get their school bag, they leave the house at a certain time, class starts at mm. nine o'clock. How, how do you work that at home? It's going to be different from family to family. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the reality. And I guess one of the benefits that people find is that over time, they, as Cora said, they get more confident and they develop their own pattern that suits their family. Mm. So um, there are different methods um, some would follow the curriculum and some would follow their children's interests much more. Um, so you, you're, you're not necessarily going to be following a school day. Mm -hmm. And certainly from, uh, from anyone that we speak to and from any of the research, even when you do follow the curriculum, you'll do it in a much shorter <coughs> excuse me, period of time. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the day will be following their interests, it'll be going on day trips. Now, I have to be honest with, with you, if I was to follow my five-year-old who's in junior infants, mm. his interests would be on the trampoline all day. You know, I think, I think, that, I think that it's a valid point, but there's nothing wrong with being on a trampoline. Exactly. No, but he wouldn't learn a whole lot in terms but of his five, alphabet. Or his... Yes, but it's funny, it, we're conditioned to think that a child needs to be Einstein by five. You know, how much does he really need to know at five? And by the time he's an adult, he'll be able to read and write and have all his, you know, all his skills. Mm. So but you don't see milestones as, as important as children who are in school and, and trying to achieve certain goals by a certain age? No, because if a child is in school, say as my children were, and they're doing average, you know, at reading for their age, you know, and it's all about the point of age, you know, where you're at, um, a child can, will know that, will pick up and think, oh, I'm only average at maths or English or Irish, you know, mm -hmm. and they learn that from a young age. There's none of that when you're homeschooled. They do it when, it's, when they're ready for it. And when it clicks, it clicks. You know, yeah. it's, it's... Maybe talk us through a typical mm -hmm. day. I mean, do you sit down? Do they, have, do they have a desk and a chair? Is there a big table? Not in our house. So okay. in our house, it's, um, it's in intensively learning about one thing for a period of time. And I definitely take the point about the trampoline. And actually, that's a lot of people's fears, you mm -hmm. know. But they'll do that for a short period of time because they'll say, wow, this is amazing. We don't have to be in school. But that changes. Yeah. And I think children do naturally want to learn. So, um, you know they might learn, certainly for my daughter now, it's all about maths at the moment. So she's constantly asking about maths. And then you'll know that uh, you, if she was talking about 
negative numbers mm. yesterday that you'll bring it on um, and, and sometimes she'll say, give me the hard ones, yeah. you know, yeah. because she's got that bit mm. and now she wants to move on. Yeah. So there's no sitting at a desk, certainly not. Um, there might be sitting on the floor. Mm. Okay. Um, there might be... Is there uh, school books? Um, we would have some school books that we'd pick up from time to time. But um, in, for, for the most part, it's learning through things that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, my son was interested in astronomy. So he's going to be learning through astronomy about subjects, different subjects. Yeah, yeah. So he might mm -hmm. be learning about, you know, history, for instance. Like, you know, you're, we're talking about a book he picked up that was out of date. And That's therefore, right. he's learned that, 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 that science moves on. Akor, mm -hmm. talk to me about the, the, the formal... Uh, exams that, that children uh, go, uh, go through, so uh, Junior Cert and Leaving Cert particularly. Uh, how, with your children who are homeschooled, are you going to address that? Will they do the exams or do, do you feel they're not necessary or what's your uh, take um, on that? I think education has moved on so much that they mightn't, you know, they, but they might. Mm. Um, at the moment they're kind of geared towards doing the exams, so they probably will. My 13 year old is going into secondary school mm. in September because she wants to experience it right. and she may well continue in the system. But the thing about school is that I don't understand is that, you know, parents hand over their children to the state for 15 years um, to the age of 18. And, um, you know, they put in all those hours every day, mm. you know, get grinds, do homework. And at the end of it, they're not guaranteed to get, say, seven A's. Yeah. You know, they don't get to pick their choice. But I suppose yeah. that the, the question is that if, if, say, one of your children decides they want to be a vet, mm. right, mm. Um, how do they get the, how do they prove to the state, uh, prove to the authorities that they have the necessary uh, ability mm. to actually take that exam? There, there's, sure. there's a variety. Yeah. I mean, the reality for home educated children is um, that they will use different methods. So it's not compulsory to do the Leaving Cert, for instance, yeah. but some will do that. And, and will, will that affect their job prospects down the line? Well, uh, I mean, certainly most will do something. So they, they, they might not do the Leaving Cert, but they might do A-levels, mm. which means that they can do subjects to, uh, you know, more intensely, more intensely yes. and to a higher level in yeah. the things that seem more relevant. Mm. Um, or some will do FETAC, for yeah. instance. So they'll, they'll look, and, and it'll be different with each child, and it's different within a family. Yeah. I suppose the, the question that enters my head is, like, you know, at, at primary school level, I would feel perfectly capable mm. of you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, answering all my children's questions up to a point. But when it comes then to the, the secondary level, I, I feel there's areas that I wouldn't have the competence in, say, maybe a foreign language, French or Spanish, or maybe I don't think I could teach them that. Or I, 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 how, how, how do you make sure that they are developing adequately uh, as, as, uh, as students? And how do you counter your own, perhaps, to say, lack of competence in a certain area? Well, you know, finding opportunities in the area that they're interested in is part of the skill of it, you know, and... Um, certainly the things that my son would be interested in aren't being taught in school, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not a case that um, they're talking about astronomy in school, for mm. instance. So it'll be finding opportunities for learning in that area, going to an observatory when we're when do, we're do, you feel, do you ever feel out of your depth? Um, I don't feel out of my depth. Yeah. No, I know I don't. Yeah. But and I, and I think we... No, actually. Yeah. No. Which is funny because it's day by day. It's step by step. They're not going to make a great leap to the leaving cert. You know, it's a pathway. They're going to get there. Yeah. Would, yeah. would you be concerned about the social skills that your children maybe miss out on this, by this not being... This is the eye-rolling question. Yes, the eye-rolling question. But a classroom is filled with lots of different characters, different personalities, personalities that might challenge your child and, you know, in the long term, bigger picture might be... A positive experience for your child to interact with yeah. with different people. Look, I think, and, I, and yeah, I mean, we joke about it being an eye rolling question, but actually, I think there's, you know, there's validity behind why people ask it. They mm. are concerned, and that's great that people are asking those questions. Um, but socialisation is certainly, from the research, it's not an issue, mm. you know, with home educated children. Also, I mean, it's not. You know, it, like when you're in a classroom with 30 people the exact same age as you, you're having a particular social experience. But, you know, in some ways, using the word home for home education is a bit of a misnomer. You're not sitting at home behind closed doors. You're mm. actually, you're, what you're doing is learning in the real world by meeting lots of people. And part of what we do in the network is to provide opportunities to get together so that children feel like, well, this mm. is, other people are doing it. Yeah. Um, 
And Cora, I, I presume, like, you know, your, your house isn't hermetically sealed, you know, that there's, you know, the, the kids are involved in sports clubs and in Lots other of sort sports, of hobbies. You know, say GAA, sort of football, hurling, camogie, mm. gymnastics, dance, music, you know, they have all of that. So every evening they get the best mm. from their friends, you know, they hang out with their friends and it's for fun. Mm. They're not spending six hours in one room with them where they can't talk, can't look at them, you know, can't be And distracted. I guess the other real advantage mm -hmm. is that, you know, when it comes to holidays, you can take mm -hmm. kids abroad during school time when the flights that's are cheaper. That's so funny that you would think about that. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> that's true. No, well, you can, but, you know, if you get the opportunity, it's fantastic. You know, we took um, our children on a road trip last summer mm. um, and the, the six of us went. Now, in the past, if we went on a holiday, it would be one week staying in the one resort you know, the beach or whatever. Yeah. And we went the length and breadth of France. And as we did, we found out all the museums yeah. as we went along. And every day, we, you know, any museum we found, we went in and we were um, learning about some part of France, you there know. You so it was yeah. a great experience. And yeah. I think that's because the children's perspective is different now. Yeah. That they're... It's fascinating, isn't it? It's a really, it's a really interesting topic. You should get a huge reaction mm -hmm. to it Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's our talking point.